千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. 古书。So once upon a time, there lived a scholar, and this scholar, the big thing about him was that he was into ancient books, books that were ancient to him. So he spent all of his time looking for ancient books in order to collect them. He studied. These ancient books from cover to cover, and the reason why he did this was because they contained powerful secrets. That's what he thought, and that's what he told everybody. And he told he liked to tell everyone, our 老祖先 our ancestors, our remote ancestors, really knew what they were talking about, really knew what they were doing. So he would tell everyone. Most people today have no idea how powerful their knowledge was. If it wasn't for a few intrepid explorers, mavericks like me, that knowledge would be lost forever. But thanks to my work, look at my collection. I have collected the powerful secrets from ancient times. So one day. He happened across a couple of books that really caught his attention. They both dated back a thousand years from his time. One of them was a book on military strategies. The other one was a book about agricultural irrigation. He snapped them up. These became like his most valued, most treasured possessions. So he devoted the next couple of years to studying them, and he was not willing to share these powerful ancient secrets. So he studied behind closed doors. He guarded them jealously, didn't want to show them to anybody. When he was done after studying them for two years, he said to everybody, "Now I am ready to apply the powerful secrets in these ancient books." I'm going to make use of these ancient books. So he gathered up the men in his village, and when they all came together, he announced to them. He said, "My friends, there is something that I want to do based on the secret knowledge of the ancient books that I have learned. As you know." Outside of our village, we have groups of bandits roaming around, terrorizing the people, disrupting trade. I mean, the criminals. We no longer need to tolerate them. We don't have to put up with them anymore. What I want to do is that I want to organize all of you into an invincible army and battle against them. We seek them out. We will destroy them. I would like all of you to join me. Now, as you can imagine, the villagers look at him, and you know he's this skinny old scholar who's spending all of his time with books. So they were skeptical. So one of the villagers said,、uh, "You want to lead an army, right? So how much military experience、uh, do you really have?" I don't think you have any. So the scholar said, "Well, no, no actual experience. 
I admit, but that doesn't matter. You want to know why? I'll tell you why. So he brought his ancient books with him and he held up the book on the ancient military strategies. And she showed it to everybody. And he said, look at this. I diligently study the secrets in this ancient book. And this is why I have the ability to command an army of a million soldiers just by following the secret knowledge here. So because of that, because I can do that, an army of a million soldiers forging a fighting force of all of you, a hundred men, extremely easy, child's play, not a problem at all. He seems so confident that the villagers decided to give this idea a try. So they signed up, they formed this army that he had asked. So he taught them the military drills from his manual and he ordered them to keep practicing. Then the scholar took his other book on agricultural irrigation and he went to see the regional governor. And he said to the governor, sir, as you know, our area has had severe flooding almost every year. And you must know as well as I do that this has resulted in a lot of suffering, many lives lost. But I have a solution for you. You want to know why? Because I have this powerful book from ancient times. And it tells me how I can lead an effort to end this problem once and for all. So if you can assign a team of workers for me under my command, we can begin immediately. So just like the villagers, the governor was also skeptical. He said, um, this is a pretty massive undertaking, a very big construction project. So have you had any experience with engineering on such a scale? To this, the scholars scoffed. Experience, your grace, I will show you experience. He brought out his ancient book and then he showed it to the governor. He said, I hold in my hand the accumulated experience of our ancestors over a thousand years to solve this exact problem. It's secret knowledge gives me the ability to turn a desert into fertile farmlands. That being the case, taming one river that's flowing through our area, it's easy, it's child's play. Again, he seems so confident that governor decided to give his idea a try. So he assigned a whole bunch of workers in accordance with the scholar's request and put those workers under his command. And so the scholar proceeded to design channels, uh, waterways in accordance with the principles from the book, from this ancient book. And then he directed his team to start digging, implement the design. And a month passed they were able to complete the project and it was just in time because the flooding season was about to begin. Satisfied with, uh, with this kind of progress, the scholar went back to the village and the men said that, well, we're uh, done practicing the drills. You know, we uh, know them really well now. So the scholar was pleased. He said, great, I am moving from one triumph to another. And this is all made possible by using the secrets of antiquity. We're going to march against the bandits right now. We'll bring them to justice and we will prevail. So they headed out from the village into the area where the bandits roamed. They had no trouble whatsoever locating, locating the bandits because the bandits were not hiding at all. Saw them coming didn't really think anything of it, confronted them. So the scholar brought out his ancient book 
and ordered in accordance to the book a frontal assault. So they rushed ahead to battle the bandits and immediately the army of the villagers collapsed. All the drills forgotten, the villagers started to run away, fleeing for their lives. Situation became desperate almost immediately and the scholar found himself running away just like everybody else. And there were several bandits who identified him as the leader, so they were pursuing him. So they almost got to him, they almost caught up with him, but suddenly they stopped. They reversed directions and ran the other way. So the scholar, fearing for his life up until this point, was relieved when he saw that they had reversed directions and started running in the opposite direction, but then he saw why. He saw that it was because a wall of water from the flooding rivers has swept up and was rushing toward him. So the irrigating techniques and the designs of the waterways, the channels that he created, well, they were just about as effective as his military strategies. So right before the water engulfed him, the scholar had time for one last thought. He was thinking the ancient secrets, the ancient books, the ancient masters, they, they betrayed me. The end. So this story may strike you as a little bit odd because it seems to be completely against the ancient books. But isn't that what we're doing right now? Aren't we studying the Tao Te Ching? I mean, that's an ancient book right there. So doesn't this story undermine the entire concept? Is it saying that what we're doing now is useless? What deliver poor results, like the war, the battle against the bandits, or the attempt to irrigate the river to prevent floods? Is that what we're talking about? What do you think? Well, it's because of knowledge. Knowledge is the topic. Knowledge is what really has been worshipped for not very good reasons. And knowledge can be a trap. That is what the story is saying. The knowledge trap. So what is this story telling us? Well, knowledge can be seductive. For the scholar, the seduction is the ancient books, the ancient lore, the secrets that nobody knows. It's the lure of knowing something others do not. For many, this gives them a feeling of superiority. With the scholar, he certainly thought that this gave him an overwhelming edge unknown to anyone else. Now, it's not just a scholar. It just, it's not just in the setting of the story. This story applies to us right now. Even today, people are so attracted to secret knowledge. They too want the edge. Indeed, with the books that I have published, I know that when people look at this book, this is where the story came from. It's from the middle of this book, The Tao of Success, The Five Ancient Rings of Destiny. I know there's an appeal that people may also be attracted to it because they think that it contains some sort of secret knowledge. And that's why. 
That is actually why um, I included the story in the Dow of Success very deliberately because I knew that this would be happening. I knew that people would be thinking in those ways. It was important for me to include it. It's also important for us to discuss it, especially in conjunction with Chapter 38. So as you can probably guess from listening to the story, there's only one way to not fall into this trap, and that is to always apply what you learn to balance book knowledge with real life experience. That's how you transform knowledge into wisdom. Notice that is what the scholar did not do. He had a blind faith in what the books were telling him, the secret ancient knowledge, quote unquote, that will make him invincible. What he should have done was to apply what he learned Balance book knowledge with real life experience, try it out on a small scale to see if he's on the right path. You learn more from doing than from reading. So that is how to avoid the trap of knowledge, the knowledge trap, zi So I mentioned another term, and that was the knowledge obstacle. It's a little bit different. Let me explain what the difference is. It applies to this story as well. That term was the knowledge obstacle. What is it? How is it different from the trap itself? Well, falling into the trap means you have strayed far from the Tao. If that is the case, how can you get back to the Tao? How can you unlearn false knowledge to get back on the right track? Well, here's the problem. False knowledge imposes a barrier that keeps you from getting back. And the way that it does this is by disconnecting you from reality. So that's the insidious aspect of knowledge that doesn't get talked about very much. When you are already believing in something false, it is difficult for you to figure out what is right. It's difficult to remove the illusion so you can see the truth clearly. That's another reason why in the Tao teachings, it's such a bad idea to engage in debates because essentially you are Let's just say that you cultivate the Tao, so you figured out the truth about something. You're, you know with a degree of certainty that you are seeing the situation accurately. Well, that doesn't matter because when you debate, you may be talking to someone who's deep in the knowledge trap, who's blocked by the knowledge obstacle. So they may be disconnected from reality in which case, there's no convincing that person. So, for instance, in zhi shi zhang ai, here's what happens. If a particular piece of knowledge did not work, is it because the knowledge is bad? Well, it very well could be, but those who are trapped and those who are caught behind the obstacle, they think that, well, the knowledge is correct, but I didn't learn the knowledge properly. It's not that the knowledge itself is faulty. It's because of me. I just need to learn it better, and then I can apply the full power of the secrets. So you blame yourself instead of the knowledge being untrue. So in our story, it is the reason why the scholar never became aware of his delusions to the bitter end. He was blocked by this, the knowledge obstacle, the zhi shi zhang ai. How can we get around this obstacle? Well, 
we have to always do the reality check. Let the experience in everyday life determine the validity of what we actually read in books. It's no different when we study the Tao Te Ching. You must apply. You must put it to use in daily life, and then you can see for yourself if it is true or not. And that's that's what I've been doing for more than 20 years. I've been applying the teachings of the Tao, even at times when I found myself thinking this can't be right. I would apply, I would observe, and I would eventually say, Laozi is right. I was wrong. I have applied what he said, I observed the results, and I can see for myself. I would urge everyone to do the same, especially now, more than ever, in these uncertain times, it is especially important for all of us to apply the knowledge that we learn, turn them into wisdom. So that's, that is the Tao in terms of what knowledge really is and how knowledge can be converted to wisdom. I think, you know, when you study the Tao and you get these concepts, you will begin to see these concepts everywhere. It'll be reflected in your daily experience. It'll be reflected in other works, uh, books, movies, television shows that you come across. You will recognize the Tao. And they will further uh, reinforce that this is really the truth. Our meeting has come to an end, but the journey continues on. Let us travel safely. Until next time, may the Tao fill you with peace and happiness.